Good morning. Good morning and praise God for this beautiful, glorious morning. Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday. Fire. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Bless you. Welcome to this time of worship. Last Sunday, I uh, and it's so good to be back with you in person. Last Sunday, I was in Atlanta, Georgia with my family for the first time in a year. I got to hug my 83-year-old mother. <laughs> And we celebrated my daughter's graduation from Spelman College last Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And at that same time, you received news that you will be receiving a wonderful new pastor in Reverend Alethea Botts. She is a wonderful woman of God, and you are going to love her. Her first Sunday with you will be June 27th. Praise God for the ministry that I have been able to bring to you as your pandemic preacher <laughs> and as the ministry that, that she will bring to you. In the life of our church, um, we have a number of losses that um, we had in the past uh, couple of weeks. Rosemary Jones lost um, her mother, Bernice Jones. Um, Eugene Delaney, his service will be next Saturday. Um, and Mary Casey lost her youngest child, uh, Chris. Um, so keep those families in your prayers um, that this wonderful Holy Spirit that we will be learning about this morning will comfort them in ways that only God can comfort and using us to, to comfort the families as well. Next Sunday is a big Sunday. Today is a big Sunday. Every Sunday, every morning is a, is a big, big day, a big deal. We'll resume in-person worship, and reservations have been made for that, so your leadership team has been hard, hard at work to make that a very smooth transition, a safe transition. Um, we are excited. We're excited about that. The message this morning, continuing in the book of Acts, the coming of the Holy Spirit and speak, people speaking in, in tongues, what really, really does that mean? God will teach us this morning. Let us praise and worship our God. Embrace 
as your presence now fills this so thankful for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We are so grateful to be here this day. And yet, we are sad, we are sick, we have worries, we have concerns. Help us to look to you to take care of those concerns. Help us to open ourselves to your healing touch. And help us to be your disciples and to give solace to those around us the best we can. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Now together we will affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The prayer of confession. I would ask that you um, meditate on this as I read aloud this prayer. It is most important in our worship to confess and to repent of our sins. Let us pray. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. As that you take this time to offer your prayer of confession in silence. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and Righteous One, we thank you for this beautiful morning. We thank you for fresh breath, for keeping us throughout the week, for keeping us through the night, for calling us to come to worship wherever we may be. Be it gathered here in uh, in this way in the parking lot, be it gathered on our front porch, on our on our devices we gather to worship you in spirit and in truth you are gracious mighty and holy there is none like you an awesome wonder the almighty one God we lift up those in our body we lift up those who are suffering, those who are sustained losses, those who are grieving and who are mourning. Someone lost a mother, a father, a brother, a cousin, a child. Holy Spirit, the great comforter, comfort as only you can. And use us, use us, these vessels, to be your presence to be light, to be salt in the earth. We praise you and we give you the glory and the honor for all that is that we celebrate, for new life, for new life, for a new morning that we have never seen before and we will never see again for your presence, which is the greatest gift. Lord, we lift up our, our community to you, our city to you, our state, our country. Lord, have mercy. We pray that lead, lead with compassion, integrity, honesty, and empathy for the neighbor and we pray the same for world leaders this is your world the God who created many languages Lord have mercy we pray this in the name of the one who taught his friends to pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 I thank God for you 
and your faithfulness in giving of your tithes and your offerings to the church for the ministries of the church continue. We are God's presence in this world. Gracious and mighty God, you are forever, you are so generous and so faithful to us, never failing to provide. No matter how much we give to you, it is but a portion of what you faithfully and generously give to us. May you find pleasure in your people. May this offering be a sweet scent to you that we lay at your feet. May your leaders, leaders of this church, be good stewards, be wise stewards. Do with this offering as you will. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. for our sermon, The Coming of the Holy Spirit. I read with you the scripture, which comes from Acts, second chapter, verses 1 through 18. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? 
Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and righteous one, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, may I decrease that you may increase. Your people want to hear from you. Your people need to hear from you. Speak. Speak, Lord. Let the willing heart hear and get understanding. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all hearts gathered be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. The text before us records the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Remember a couple of weeks back, we visited the text where the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. They were the third, that was the third outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But today at Pentecost is the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So we're backing up to learn of this, this promise that Jesus made when he, before he ascended into heaven. He promised that a comforter and power would come and that is the Holy Spirit. So what brings us to this place in time in the passage? What happened before Jesus was crucified? On the third day, he arose. Now, Jesus was crucified during Passover. He arose from the dead. He walked among them. He ate and drank with them after he resurrected from the dead. And then he just went away in a poof. <laughs> In a poof, he went away. Can you imagine how they were left afraid and confused by what they had seen? Feeling helpless, feeling hopeless. Imagine how they must have felt before his ascension, before he was taken away in this poof, he promised that God also known as Abba, also known as Yahweh, our creator, he promised that an advocate, a comforter would come. He told them, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. 
This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees nor knows him. Jesus was telling them, I will no longer physically be with you. I won't physically walk among you, but I will be in you forever. So when the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house. Pentecost. What is the day of Pentecost? The Jewish people have three major, major holidays, pilgrim festivals, Passover, Pentecost, and the festival of shelters. So recall that Jesus was crucified during this Passover feast. And many Jews were gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover. So now they are gathered in Jerusalem for another festival, Pentecost, which means 50. And Pentecost occurs 50 days after Passover. Now Jesus had physically left them 10 days earlier, which we term as the Ascension. And they were now together in one place, doing what they always did. They met together and they prayed. These were some praying people. And as they were praying, this mighty violent wind swept through. The move of the spirit only happens when there's prayer. Only with prayer. The word says divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. These elements of wind and fire were present. Tongues symbolizes different languages and fire symbolizes the purification process. How God purifies us and burns away any des undesirable things in us. Burns away the elements, those undesirable things in our lives and sets our hearts aflame to ignite the lives and affect the lives of others. That flame, the flame that we see in the cross in the United Methodist Church represents that fire of the Holy Spirit. This fire came at Pentecost, during the Pentecost festival, and it fell upon all believers in the room. The fire symbolized God's power and presence. They did not speak in other languages by their own will, but only as the Spirit gave them the ability to do so. So Jews from all over the known region, from all over the world were present for this celebration of Pentecost. And in prior years, the Jews had been scattered. This great diaspora, they had been scattered after persecution, scattered from Jerusalem, and they were living in all those different regions, all of those different places that the text that Lillian read all those, <laughs> read all those countries, read all those, I won't try to pronounce them, but thank you. <laughs> They came from all over, from Africa, from Egypt, from Asia, from Libya. They came from all over. So while they were living in those nations after the, the diaspora, they had learned and were speaking other languages. So now they're back in Jerusalem. They could move back to Jerusalem. And now they were hearing these Jews speaking to them in their native language. The hearers understood what was being spoken. The Jews in the upper room did not know those languages. 
it was the Holy Spirit that gave them the utterance to speak those languages so that those present would understand and be amazed. What was being spoken? What did they say? Verse 11 tells us the wonderful things God has done. That's what was being spoken in all those different languages. The mighty works of God, the mighty miracles of God. And God's message was clear. The gospel is for all, for all, for all. Now there are those who mocked. There are cynics. There are those who said they're drunk. They're drunk, and Peter, who is always the first to speak, explained the Old Testament tro prophecy of Joel. The Old Testament prophet spoke of in the last days. Let's get some clarity on, on what in the last, are we living in the last days? Yes, we are. What does that mean? The last days means from now until the second coming of Christ. That's what it means. The prophet said all would receive God's spirit. Men, women, young, old, Jews, Gentiles, rich, poor, free, the servants, all would receive God's spirit. Yes, there was skepticism in the first century, and there's skepticism in the 21st century. I remember recalling an experience. I was visiting a church out west, and um, the pastor spoke in different languages. And someone was visiting in the back of the church, and he had never been to the church before, and he said, that pastor is speaking in pure Latin. Now, this was a country preacher. He didn't know Latin, and Latin is a dead language, right? <laughs> so someone was present who understood the language of Latin. Miracles, miracles. Oh, that God would use vessels, that God would use us, that he used them in the upper room to speak to all people in a language that they could understand, to speak to them in terms that they can understand. God can do anything. And the Almighty loves us so much that the Almighty would love us so much to communicate with us, to us, in a language that we understand. To communicate this gospel to the whole world. Our God is a God of equity, desiring all to know the truth. The Jews in the upper room, the, the, those that were gathered in that house on the rooftop, they experienced something. They felt something. And we talked about that feeling a couple of weeks ago when the Gentiles experienced that feeling. What is that feeling? John Wesley described it as his heart being strangely warmed. What is your feeling? You know it when you feel it. You know it when you experience it. It's the very presence of God manifested in the human in the most mysterious way. Words often fail us, but because God loves us and seeks to manifest, manifest the spirit, manifest himself in so many ways, it can leave us speechless. And some things we just can't figure out. It's beyond our human comprehension. 
I don't know about you, but I really don't want to serve a God that I can completely figure out. I like my God to blow me away every now and then. Amen. So how can we know, how can we know the presence of the Holy Spirit in ourselves and others? There should be fruit. Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. And Paul said that fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the tangible evidence. And then there's this inexplicable feeling. The feeling these Jews experienced as they were overtaken and spoke in different languages. The Holy Spirit came 50 days after Jesus' resurrection and 10 days after his ascension on the day of Pentecost, on the day of the Pentecost festival. His resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit all occurred during major Jewish celebrations where many were present. That's not a coincidence. This was giving many the opportunity to witness the fulfillment of prophecy. But would they believe? And would we believe? This, this powerful account, this happening, this presence of the Holy Spirit's appearance, the debut of the Holy Spirit, if you will, was necessary for the gospel to spread all over the earth. And that was done by God, not by humans. No human could boast, no human could take any credit for what happened at the Pentecost festival. No human, only Christ could take the credit for Christ promised the comforter would come. Jesus made so many promises and he made good on every one of them. The comforter came that day and the comforter came in a powerful way. Christ's presence is critical. You know, we, we need more than a little Jesus in order for this kingdom to grow. It is Christ's kingdom. It is critical in the building of his kingdom. Otherwise, we labor in vain. What are we doing? What are we doing? We are necessary. We are necessary and needed. God loves us so much that God wants to partner with us in spreading this gospel, in spreading love, and being vessels, vessels, the church being a vehicle of love. Christ needs us, needs us, needs our loving obedience and our demonstration of love to one another. That's what Jesus needs from us. Spreading the gospel is done by our obedience to the move of God. They spoke in different languages. And why is this most relevant in a global, a global society? because God desires this powerful manifestation of love to be available to all, to be communicated to all. People became believers at Pentecost. They came to believe and they returned to their native lands as believers blown away by they couldn't hold it you you experience something like that you can't keep it to yourself 
they returned to their native lands to preach and to spread the gospel and to, to tell people what they had experienced. Beloved, we have social media to help us fulfill the commandment that Jesus gave. Jesus commanded of all who walk in the way, who say we say we are followers, we follow we are followers of Jesus Christ. He commanded that we make disciples of all nations. And he gave us the help to do it. God doesn't call us to do something that God does not empower us with to do, to achieve it. God sets us up for success, not for failure. And so walking out and 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 walking out his commandment could only be accomplished by communicating this gospel in different languages and that's what happened at the Pentecost festival and this beloved is our witnessing to the ends of the earth amen amen gracious and holy one God the creator of many languages the creator of many languages if we had and we do have a thousand tongues you created them all we thank you for this word we thank you for this teaching for your presence for keeping your promises you promised the comforter would come and that comforter came in a mighty and powerful way and is with us to teach us, to love us, to guide us, to work miracles through willing vessels. Lord, we thank you for this word and we thank you for the teaching. Amen. Amen. me how I know he lives he lives within my heart this promise that that Jesus made that a comforter would come and would be in us always 
That's how I know he lives. Yes, there's reason, there's tradition, but it's nothing like a personal experience. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the grace, peace, love, and joy of our Savior be with you. And as you leave this place, go and know that you are loved and you are empowered by the Holy Spirit within you. God bless you. God bless you.